Plan games anywhere at any time, basically from any location, is one of those dream technologies. Now, it's not quite there yet, but that's not through the want of trying. Now, EVE Online developers CCP are making a move on this with EVE Online Anywhere. It's going into beta for all players of the game within the United States and is a new cloud-based platform that will allow EVE to be played within a supported web browser without any need for installing the game client. Now, CCP have already conducted a short trial on this. The new beta is designed to expand the testing with a time-limited trial. Eventually, when EVE Online Anywhere fully launches, players will be able to play on their main client and then swap out to the web browser as and when they desire, or indeed just log into the web browser and simply pick up and play. So EVE Online Anywhere will have a cost to it. However, so far as I can see, CCP haven't yet announced any pricing. The beta will also be available to new players that meet the requirements. Personally, I think this is a pretty amazing development and one which EVE Online is very well suited to. It will likely open up the ability to play the game even on very low-powered laptops, assuming the internet connection is good enough quality, of course. It's something I'm looking forward to seeing how it actually turns out. The new update for X4 Foundations finally releases today. The update is called Cradle of Humanity and adds a significant amount of content to the game. The new expansion will also, for the first time, see the ability to return to Terran space with the solar system itself and even Earth. Other highlights include new sectors, new story missions, new game starts and some visual improvements. X4 remains a gorgeous looking game and if you want to find out more about X4 Cradle of Humanity, do check out the links in the video description. It's a title I'm certainly hoping to get some time with over the coming days, so we'll see how that goes. Now, Star Citizen is in the news again, and as always, it's for one of two reasons. Either the title has hit a financial milestone, or else it has got muddled in some form of controversy. Or this month, the title has managed to achieve both of these. The game has now surpassed over $350 million in funding, and this puts its production budget among the highest funded games of all time. Closing in on 10 years into development though, I feel it's time for people to step back a little and start looking at this money as revenue generated rather than funding. Although CIG themselves classify the money as crowdfunding, it is generated from the sounds of the game in addition to sounds of add-ons and other things. Typically in the live service games industry, this is classified as revenue. Basically then, what I'm saying is that a rose by any other name is still a rose. So all companies rely on revenue, it's a function of their business, and CIG is no different. Essentially, this means that CIG has now generated over $350 million in revenue from selling copies of Star Citizen, pre-orders of Squadron 42, ships, in-game credits, cosmetics, and even permits for sections of land during the lifetime of Star Citizen's development. Added to this is a further estimated $70 million, uh, basically extrapolated, which has been generated from subscriptions and partnerships by the end of 2019. References to this can be found in last year's CIG financials. So this then puts Star Citizen at a total of $420 million in lifetime revenue, plus any revenue gained from subscriptions and partnerships since the start of 2020. So, how does this compare to other titles? Well, let's take a look. The lifetime revenue of Elite Dangerous, as of the most recent financial report from Frontier, is at approximately $140 million. Meanwhile, Star Citizen generated $77 million in revenue in 2020, and this compares to EVE Online's $66 million in revenue for the same year of 2020. Keep in mind that both Elite and EVE are fully released games, and even though uh, Star Citizen was announced all the way back in 2012 during its Kickstarter period, Star Citizen has yet to release as a fully feature complete game that is uh, fully functional. It's probably also worth mentioning here that CIG have received some substantial investments which when added to the lifetime revenue equate to a total of nearly half a billion dollars in, uh, in total pumped into Star Citizen to date. Yeah, a lot of money. Meanwhile, CIG were in the news again thanks to a piece from Kotaku. 
which highlighted some shocking claims about CIG's approach to staff during the recent national emergency in Texas. Essentially, the claims are that some of the staff were supposedly asked to use their paid, uh, paid leave time if they were unable to make it into work during this time of serious crisis due to the extreme weather conditions. There have been numerous disputes over this, however, so I'd urge anyone interested in the subject to take a look at the available information and make their own minds up. The Kotaku article is linked in the video description, and of course, as always, the subject will be heavily discussed on the Star Citizen subreddit. Moving on to other Star Citizen news, website Den of Geek very recently took a look at all the controversies that have hit Star Citizen and CIG to date. And to be honest, there is a surprisingly high number of them. The link to the article can be found linked below, and if you want to entertain and read, it's well worth taking a look. In Microsoft Flight Simulator news, we now have the first highly detailed plane so far released and is available as of today. The plane comes from third-party developer Aerosoft, and the add-on includes the two planes, the CIJ-550 and the CIJ-700. These are jet planes, They're actually very impressive. The models here are extremely detailed and they take full advantage of all the technology in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This also extends to the cockpit as well as the controls which are extremely detailed and very well modelled. Basically, this is as close as you can get so far to a study level plane. But do keep in mind that Aerosoft generally don't release study level aircraft, so we shouldn't expect that from the CRJ. But that said, this is definitely far and above anything that's so far available for Microsoft Flight Simulator. A sneak peek of the plane can be seen right here on screen. This is the recent trailer, released today actually, from Microsoft themselves. And this is a plane I'm going to be looking at very closely very soon, so do keep an eye out for that. The add-on costs 50 euros, and you can find all the details you need linked below. Outriders. It's a game that has well, basically gained quite a bit of interest over the recent months. For any of you out there that are interested, like me, in Warframe, basically one of my favourite games of all time, or if you personally prefer to play uh, Destiny 2, then Outriders is very likely a game that's going to have something for you. Outriders is a looter shooter. It's PvE only. There's absolutely no PvP in it whatsoever. Not a good move. The new information then about Outriders this week is that it will be coming to uh, Xbox Game Pass on release. The release date is the 1st of April, no joke. And if, well, if it's too far away, if you don't want to wait, there is currently a demo available and you can try that out. The demo is available on all the platforms. Talking of all platforms, Outriders will be fully cross-play, so that is definitely a nice touch. You'll be able to team up with anyone, regardless on which platform they're actually playing. So if nothing else, do check out that demo. I think it's going to be worth a go. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.